Why, Superintendent Skinner, our Mrs. Skinner and the little Skinnerettes. My application? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. And might I say, sir, you've made an excellent choice. Because you chose me. Woohoo! This is not fair! What's with you, Weems? Mikey wasn't bothering anyone. Don't blame it on Randall. You know the rules. No toys from home allowed on the playground, including Mikey's fun boy haiku poetry game. Pick a five-syllable phrase invoking an image of nature. Just the kind of garbage that'll throw a school into chaos. Come, Randall. Job well done. You know, I'm getting sick of how things work around this joint. Perhaps we should bring this injustice to Principal Prickly's attention. Come on, Gretch. He's the guy who made that no toys in the playground rule. He doesn't care about us kids. Attention. May I have your attention, please? You too. Children, faculty, janitors, and whoever else works here. I'm sure you're all aware of the terrible cheese doctor scandal that recently rocked our dinner. Well, good news. The principal of Spiro D. Agnew Middle School has been fired, and I've been chosen to replace him. <gasps> That's right. I'm leaving. Excuse me, Randall. I need to be alone. I'm sure you're all as thrilled for me as I am for myself, so feel free to celebrate, because today's a happy, happy day. Oh, did I say a happy, happy day? I meant a happy, happy, happy day. The happiest happy day ever. There's just one thing. To make sure I've been doing a good job here at 3rd Street, Superintendent Skinner will be visiting Thursday for an official inspection. Now go practice your manners. Because I am out of here. <laughs> Bricks. Huzzah! Finally, we can relax and live like kids. I'm wearing my Beauty and Chip t-shirt to school, and nobody's gonna stop me! <laughs> I've got a little something in mind for the Ashleys. Let's just say electromagnets are involved. This is going to, uh, as they say, rock! Don't be so sure. Menlo? You think you've had it bad so far? Well, let me tell you, the worst is yet to come. What? Menlo, that necktie's choking off your noggin. Yeah, sorry, guy. Prickly is leaving. You fool! Certainly I know he's leaving. But did you ever consider who might be coming to replace him? The news arrived in the office in the form of a fax. Our new principal is the strictest, meanest, toughest administrator in the whole entire district. A man they call Slicer. Slicer? And tomorrow, he's coming for a visit. Oh, come on. There's no way this slicer guy can be any worse than Prickly. Gilda? Sir? Notes. Main compound needs a new cover of paint. Hedges there, there, and there require trimming. They obscure the northeast and southeast approaches to the main entrance, leaving it vulnerable. Overall impression. Could use more discipline. Miss Finster, Miss Finster! The new principal's here, and boy, does he have big plans for this place. School uniforms, regulation haircuts, and get this. He's tearing down the jungle gym and putting in a guard tower. Oh, Miss Finster, isn't he wonderful? Miss Finster? <sighs> You'd think I'd be happy, wouldn't you, Randall? But Principal Prickly and I, for years now, we've been a team. Like liver and onions, like clam juice and celery. Like Finster and Weems? Yes, Randall, a little like Finster and Weems. Wow, that slicer guy really is scary. Aw, oh, he's nothing. Watch as I work a little of the old Detweiler magic on him. Hey, Slicey Baby, how's it hanging? I believe I've read your dossier. Yes, Detweiler, Theodore J., the troublemaking funny boy. You do consider yourself a funny boy, don't you, Detweiler? Um... Well, I don't like funny boys, Detweiler. It was a funny boy who gave me this car. How, you ask? Let's just say electromagnets were involved. Gilda, pen and paper. For your information, Theodore Detweiler, my name is not Slicey, it is Dr. Slicer. I have a PhD in discipline with a minor in punishment. Do not forget it. Now, straighten up. Take off your hat. Starting Monday, when I become your principal, this will be your hat. Gilda, those tetherball poles, there, there, and there. Have them ripped out. That guy is worse than Prickly. We gotta do something. Principal Prickly! Hey, you little grade school muppets. What do you want? Uh, we just want to tell you about how wonderful you are and stuff. Uh, yeah. Anyone says you want, they're just plain wrong. Principal Slicer? No, Prickly sounds nicer. Lovely, kids. But it's obvious the only reason you're being nice to me is because you're scared of my replacement. And you know what I say to that? Sorry! <laughs> nice hat. Mail, sir. This is 
the radio news. Our top story. Spiral T. Agnew Middle School has just been named the world's most dangerous place on earth. What? Here's our experts to tell you why Spiral T. Agnew was more dangerous than any other place except for maybe inside lava. Hi, I'm a scientist. And I'm a fearless adventurer. All I gotta say, Spiral T. Agnew School gives me the willies. It's got ghosts and stuff. It's built on top of a graveyard. And it's full of red-hot laser beams. Look out! Here comes a nuclear zombie that lives there. Stop so I can eat you. Ah! Very funny, you elementary school kids and your practical jokes. Well, from now on, I'm only concerning myself with the problems of middle school kids. Now leave me alone. I told you I should have been the scientist. Oh, man, this is hopeless. Yeah, Skinner's coming for his big inspection tomorrow. Once that's finished, Prickly's out of here. Wait a minute. The big inspection, that's it. Prickly says he wants middle school problems. I say we help him out. I'm afraid I'm not following you, TJ. Gretchen, what do you know about 13-year-olds? For Prickly's a jolly good principal. For Prickly's a jolly good principal. Which nobody can deny. Wow, Prickly, I'm impressed. You didn't put the kids up to this, did you? Oh, no, sir. Now, right this way, the kindergartners have spontaneously taught themselves a traditional Irish folk dance. Wonderful! But, uh, who are those children over there? I, I have no idea who they are. Well, then, let's meet them. Hello, son. I notice you're not lined up with the other students. That's because I reject you, man. You and everything you stand for. Well, that's fairly disturbing. Oh, that's just T.J. Detweiler, sir. He's just joking around. Ah, here's the intelligent and courteous Gretchen Grundler. Say hello to the very important man, Gretchen. Greetings are depressing. Life is pointless. Leave me now to grapple with my own irrelevance as I confront young adulthood. Man. I know I gotta make weight, but I can't live on ginseng and egg whites forever. I'm breaking out. Yet another sock hop spent alone with my regrets. I have father issues. By Jove, Prickly, these are just the types of problems you'll be encountering in middle school. It's the perfect opportunity for you to show off your one-on-one -on -one counseling skills. Oh, uh, certainly, sir. Um, yo, back off. Yo, cheer up. You eat something. Yo, cut back on the fried foods. You, mow the lawn. You are so dreamy. Ow! Get a hamster! Prickly? What decisive handling of those children's strange problems. Spiro T. Agnew is yours. Let's go iron out the details, shall we? Sir, I would be delighted. <sighs> that was our last chance. I guess Prickly really is leaving. All right, everybody. Break it up. There's nothing left to see. Nothing left at all. Gilda, this weapon is full of cement. See that it's cleaned out and made operational. All right, everybody, be brave. In a moment, Principal Prickly will walk out the door of Third Street School forever. Gee, Miss Pinster, you're pretty upset about this, huh? It's a crushing blow. My own personal Hindenburg. Well, then, how come you didn't help us try and get him to stay? Oh. <sighs> Principal Prickly is my friend. For years, he's wanted to run a middle school. It's his dream, and I'm not going to get in the way of that. Because when you really care about someone, you forget about what's best for you, and you do what's best for them. Well, that does it. Adios, K through Sixers. I'm off to 789 City. <laughs> Jeez, what's up with Finster? Sir, what it is with Miss Finster? Well, I think she's just really happy for you. And to be honest, so are we. You are? Yeah. I mean, all things considered, you've been a pretty okay principal. And, well, sir, we're gonna miss you. TJ, I, I had no... Bravo! Very touching indeed. From now on, we'll just call you Captain Sappy. Now, hold on, Slicer. That Wilder was merely expressing... Enough! That... When I begin my duties here on Monday, there will be no sappiness. Sappiness makes you soft, like Miss Finster here. Finster, henceforth, Gilda is in charge of the playground. You will be her assistant. <gasps> you will wear a gray dress and answer to this whistle. Now come, Principal Prickling. It's time to move on. Go now and feel no need to look back. I'll whip this school into shape. Sappiness. Huh. This is it, guys. Today's the day. The end of life as we know it. Which hat am I supposed to wear? He didn't say which hat I'm supposed to wear! Thanks for the ride, Slicey! You're making a big mistake, Prickly! Principal Prickly, what are you doing here? Skinner wouldn't cough up enough cash, so I decided to stay. But believe me, the minute they make a better offer, I am out of here! Well, it's a school day, isn't it? Stop standing around!